I first met Rick Burns back in the 80s. This is when Gallery Connection was a fledgling gallery, an artist-run center, and I had the opportunity to show my own work. And while I was installing my work, all of a sudden I heard a noise in a corner and uh, I was confronted abruptly by Rick in his wheelchair. He was like a whirling dervish, just came into my space and started talking and asking me questions. And we hit it off right away. He was very um, funny and knowledgeable, um, loads of questions. And I really enjoyed that meeting. I, a little later, I learned that he was an artist and uh, I learned all about him and followed his work over the years. I didn't really know uh, the backstory of, of Rick Burns. And one of the things I enjoy as a curator and an art educator is um, learning how an artist comes to their vision, um, where the work comes from. And I, I often wondered that about Rick because of the bodies, the, the imagery, the fragments of the human body floating, um, and the fact that he was in a wheelchair. But when you, when you confronted Rick about his past, the accident, um, he would kind of brush it off. He wasn't interested really in going there. In fact, he said that um, he had an accident when he was in Africa with his father <laughs> on a safari and he fell off the elephant. Um, well, we know that wasn't true. I was very fortunate to, to meet uh, Rick's sister, Kathy, and Kathy filled me in on the details. It was back in 1964. September, Labor Day weekend. Uh, Rick was only 14 years old. Um, he and three others uh, were in a car driving and it was the most horrendous car accident, a crash. The driver was killed instantly. Uh, one of the other passengers um, uh, suffered uh, permanent brain damage. Uh, one had minor injuries. And Rick, well, his spinal cord was severed and he became a quadriplegic. And this began quite a horrendous uh, journey and experience for Rick. Uh, he was in the hospital uh, for two years in a sling, a body sling. They also had the contraption on his head to keep, to keep him still so he wouldn't move. And after two years of, of that, he did another two years in therapy. Um, just learning to, um, to do what he could do. Uh, he suffered from bed sores. He um, had an addiction to Valium and painkillers. Um, it must have been a horrendous readjustment. Um, he was pretty athletic. He was a champion figure skater. He enjoyed boxing. All of a sudden, that world disappeared. And, uh, but fortunately, he had a burning passion since his childhood in the visual arts. He drew and painted, and I think that was his saving grace. But Rick went on not just to survive, but to actually thrive and to set an example, an example of really a heroic um, proportions. Um, Rick's disability didn't hold him back. And he set up his studio with pulleys and a table that would rotate on a motor and he had sawhorses where he could put his paintings. Um, and his work, um, his ideas um, emerged and I think they emerged out of his experience. He turned something that was uh, just a tragic event in anyone's li life at the age of 14 into something that was quite beautiful in the end, um, something that we can all um, take something from, mainly the message of the fragility of life, um, the transience of life, um, our own relation to our bodies, the limits, the restrictions of our, our own bodies, and I think the human striving for transcendence, for something more, for meaning, um, and I think uh, Rick is really a model of how the arts can propel one and can, can lead someone to find more than just therapy, but actually to, to truly find enjoyment, meaning, um, 
energy um, to really find the Alain Vital in, in the human condition and in, in life.